This is Newsmaker Saturday with Charles Bierbauer. Anyone that impressed me enough to vote for any of them right now? I think we are tired of George Bush because too many people is out of work. Across the country, voters are angry with the president, mad at Congress, and fed up with local officials because of the economy, the perks of office, and a sense that nothing is getting done. These days, the American public holds few politicians in high esteem. In Illinois this week, voters bounced one congressman who had habitually bounced checks in the House's bank of ill repute. Maybe he's not handling um, how he's bouncing his checks properly, that he's not handling other issues correctly. Two-term Senator Alan Dixon's vote to seat Clarence Thomas on the Supreme Court contributed to his being unseated in the Democratic primary. The spot for this campaign was the Senate exposing itself to the American people and the people looking at the Senate and not liking what they saw. In state after state, voters have warned President Bush of their economic discontent. I know that people are hurting out there. But neither the President nor Congress has been able to push politics aside to jointly address the nation's economic needs. Congress has rejected Mr. Bush's economic plan, and he has vetoed theirs. The American people now know that they've been trickled on. It is time for Congress to either lead to follow or simply get out of the way. It's time for the high political theater to end and for us to get together and run a country. The political theater will play out its final act in November, but gentlemen, let's find out exactly how angry the voters are. Mr. Harris, is this without precedent, what you are hearing around the country? Charles, I'd say that the level of anger, the level of fury against the establishment because they feel nothing being done, people are insensitive to them, is the highest uh, we've ever seen. As a matter of fact, I've been measuring what we call alienation or disenchantment uh, since 1964, and what I find uh, is, is, is incredible. The number of people who say they feel uh, alienated from people in power is risen from uh, 19% back in 1964, all the way up to 64% today. Uh, this is the highest we've ever gotten just this year. Uh, what, what, let me give a little bit on the items. Uh, th these are things like the rich get poorer, the, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. Uh, those in power want to take advantage of people like me. What I think doesn't count much anymore. Uh, I feel left out of things around me. Uh, five items like this. And uh, all of them, just up, 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 up. Basically, I think one of the bottom lines is that 71% of the American people feel the leadership of the country, and that's pretty indiscriminate, whether it's Congress or it's the president or governors or whoever, are simply out of touch with the people. Let me ask Senator Wellstone about that. Is it the leadership uh, indiscriminately across the board, or are you going to tell me it's, uh, it's the do-nothing Republicans? Uh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say it's do nothing Republicans. I, I think Charles that people do feel as if uh, President Bush just is not in touch with their daily lives, and I think in general people feel not very many good things are happening in Washington for them. I mean, the good news about this is that people are not hunkered down in a status quo mood. They want change. I mean, the bad news can be if people don't stay focused on issues and opt out and don't hold people of both parties accountable. I think the other issue, and I say this kind of more as a political scientist than a, than a senator, is we have what James McGregor Burns would call deadlock of democracy right now. We have a divided government, and I think people may very well have to make a choice this November as to what ways they want to have a more coherent government that can act on policy. Either they're going to change at the White House or they're going to change in the Congress. Mr. Limbaugh, when people call you on your, uh, on your talk show on the radio, are, are they uniformly angry? Yeah, I think the, the information from uh, Mr. Harris is pretty much uh, representative of that which I hear on my program, although I don't, I don't want it uh, misconstrued here that I think what happens on the program is as scientific as the information that he would gather by virtue of what he does. But it is a way to, uh, to get in touch with the people. I, I, would, I would also say I find it strange to be agreeing with Senator Wellstone. I think this may be one of those uh, rare, rare times where that's going to happen. But Rush, governmental gridlock. Out. Government... <laughs> <laughs> governmental gridlock is exactly what we've got, but I have a theory about, about who's responsible for it and, and why it's happened. And I think most of the anger that, is ex that, that people feel out there today and, and blame for this gridlock is aimed at Congress and not the White House, not the executive branch. 
Mr. Harris, uh, does well, that theory uh, stand up? No, I don't think so. I think uh, what, what you've got is this. People have become increasingly cynical over the years about politicians, about the political process. As a consequence, they want divided government. You can go out and poll on it any day of the week, and you'll get nearly 60 percent. This hasn't varied over about 15 years. We say, I'd rather have divided government than, the, uh, than, than unified government. Why? Because of their cynicism about politics generally, they want one set of rogues looking over the shoulder of the other. Lou, that's really hard to believe. I mean, this is, I, I, that's no, what, this is a fact. Well, that's this what Tip O'Neill always said. Tip O'Neill always really? said that the reason there's a liberal Congress is because people knew they were sending some fanatical extremist right winger, a, a ringer like Reagan to, to, to the White House. We need a, a check and a balance on him. And I just simply refute that. I, I don't, I don't well, think that that's well, Russ, the case why, at all. Why, why do you think Ronald Reagan was never able to carry the Congress? Uh, you, you know, I, I, precisely because of the, the way local elections take place, and that was my theory, which local? I... Local? These which, are yeah. federal elections. No, 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 there are local elections in Congress, local elections, and ideology doesn't matter, and, and, and I think that's where this, this big change this fall has a chance to manifest itself, uh, is, is because what happens is everybody thinks their congressman's okay, but everybody else's is the problem. This check-bouncing problem, or this, this House Bank scandal, is the one thing now that may prove the ingredient necessary to get individuals mad at their own congressmen for the first time, as evidenced by what happened to Mr. Hayes in Chicago and elsewhere uh, last Tuesday. And I think it may be the first chance people have really had to get angry at their own congressman to vote him out. Let me, let me, get, Senator Wells, let me get Senator Wellstone in on, on precisely that yeah. point. Senator, you ousted an incumbent uh, uh, two years ago out in, in Minnesota, and it is very hard to accomplish that. And yet, are we seeing now... Uh, a broader tendency, or is what happened in Illinois uh, somewhat uh, an anomaly because it happened at the, precisely the time when this bank scandal came up? Well, no, I, I think that the 90 was the beginning of, uh, of a trend in the country where, again, people are going to vote for change. And I think it's, it's, it's going to be much more difficult for incumbents to win. In the past, it's been very wired for incumbents in terms of advantages of fundraising and whatnot. But I, I think the, the big issue in the minds of people is there's a disconnect between, you know, people come up to me, Senator, I'm out of work. Senator, I can't pay my doctor's bill. Senator, I can't send my kids to college. Senator, I'm going to be foreclosed on. Senator, where's the economy going? And then they look to see whether or not there's policies that are going to make a difference in their lives. And they don't see that. And I, and I understand what Lou said about in the past, people having such, if you will, suspicion of government that they want to see it divided. But I think that maybe one of the choices people are going to have to make this time is what direction do they want the country to go in and, and, and not a divided government and not the gridlock. And I personally think that um, there's a very good chance that we'll see a different president in office. And I think that will be for the best, which is not to say that we can't and shouldn't do much better in the Congress. We should. But this deadlock, this gridlock, this impasse, this failure to pass some legislation important to people's lives is a huge problem. Charles, can I, well, can I, can I, can I jump in here well, for just a second? Well, because let me, I, let me, no, no, I'm gonna, I want to hold you back for just a second because I, I want to pick up on a point there and ask Mr. Yeah. Harris this, this disconnect. Uh, if I read the figures correctly, the economy has been worse in the past, uh, but we have not seen this same kind of anger. So what the senator is hearing, people coming up to him and saying, you know, I haven't got a job and I can't do this and I can't do that. Why is that uh, apparently... Uh, more meaningful this time than it was when the economy was even worse. Charles, we, we've probed and probed on this, and I think finally we've come up with an answer. Uh, yes, indeed, compared to the early 80s, the recession, by all measures, is not as severe. But something's happened that makes this time very different. For the first time, we find a majority of the American people believe that their standard of living is going down and permanently, and that for their children even worse. This is, this is a shock. We always measure our progress versus ourselves, you know, six, versus six months ago, versus 12 months ago, five years ago. We have gaining on us outside, just outside our, our peripheral vision, two forces that we better begin to compare ourselves with. Who are they? The Japanese and the Germans. And when you compare there, our standard of living is not as high, our real income is not as high, why our productivity is lower, our economic gains and growth is lower. And this, 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 this is what Americans are beginning to see. Three out of every four say, we're losing the battle against competition abroad, 
our standard of living is going down. We've had people's standard of living go down in recessions before. The idea that it's permanent is appalling to the American people. Let, That's what let me uh, let me let Mr. Limbaugh get back in there briefly before we take a break, sir. Well, okay. I don't I don't think the standard of living of Japan is is something that I would want, and I I think our standard of living is still a little higher. I wouldn't want to have to live in the circumstances that the people in Japan have to live under with the limitations on space and so forth. But but my point earlier about uh, th this whole business of of, of uh, whether or not people feel frozen out and, and, and deadlocked on things. Uh, we have the economy rebounding now, Charles. CNN reports all the time, and the newspapers for the past couple of weeks have been saying that the uh, recession is starting to show signs of weakening. Recovery is back because consumer spending is back. People are spending money all of a sudden. Housing starts, which traditionally leads these things, are up. And I'd like to ask this question. What act of Congress or what act by any of the presidential candidates has inspired this? I would submit to you nothing. The people make things happen in this country. And I, I am, I'm reluctant to uh, be satisfied when I see so many people saying, gee, I can't do anything to help myself. What can my congressman do for me? I think people are more Let's... capable of doing things for themselves without the meddling or the need of Congress, and I think that the recent economic statistics, consumer spending, show that. We'll let uh, the Senator pick up on that question when we come back. We'll be right back. Stay with us, please. You know, I can still remember the very first candy given to me by my grandfather. It was Werther's original, and I was four. I had a little trouble opening that shiny golden wrapper, but then, well, I'll never forget that first taste sweet and creamy and just plain good but there was something else too i remember feeling i must be somebody very special when my grandpa gave me his wonderful butter candy so now i'm the grandfather and what else would i give my little grandson but my werther's original he's somebody special too The Congress is not unified with the president. The vote on this resolution should be yes. This tax is a loser. We side with the people and we side with freedom. We better get our priorities straightened around in a hurry. Where would the issues be without cable? The $15 million a year it costs to bring America C-SPAN is totally paid for by cable companies like yours. What is the wisest course of action for our nation? We see this as the first step. Cable contributes to life. I think I'll make fresh dressing. Good seasons? Mm-hmm. Which oil? Pick a light one. Mmm. Dressing's great. Good seasons. You make it fresh. You make it best. Tonight, the Democrats narrow. Now, just two in the running. And can anyone bounce back from the bad check rating scandal in Congress and the White House? On CNN's Capital Gang, 7 Eastern tonight. Senator Wellstone, let, uh, let's take that question that Mr. Limbaugh poses. What has Congress really done that should inspire people? Well, let, let me first of all respond to the other thing that Rush said, if okay, Charles. Um, I, I want to say to Rush and, and, that I'm, I'm surprised I find myself in agreement with one of his points, which is that uh, people just can't say, well, what has uh, the Congress or government have done for me? I mean, I think people really need to hold people in office accountable and and part of what has to happen is a citizenry that becomes not more disengaged but more engaged now the second point about how sort of individual people will do it and that's what will make our economy successful i think is way off base i mean if you look at the countries that are doing well western germany or germany now a single integrated european market japan pacific rim it's a public private partnership it's strategic investment it's investment in education and kids it's investment in high-value products, high-value labor. Our country has to go in that direction. And I'll tell you that right now, I mean, the best initiatives in the Congress have to do with what we're going to do about making health care affordable, have to do with how we're going to protect our environment, have to do with how we invest in education our kids, and have to do with how we have a strong defense but translate some money or transfer some money from military to domestic. So well, I think Senator, that's really where we have to go. Senator, let me ask you this question then. The little game that was played in Washington on Friday, uh, con uh, the Congress finally sending a plan down to the White House and the President writing his veto message before he even saw the plan, and then both of them getting on, on, on television and blaming each other. How long can that game continue uh, before the, the, the voters just say, this is ridiculous? Well, I mean, I think, again, I wouldn't call it a game. 
I mean, I would call it an impasse. And I would not say that that tax relief bill was the end all. I mean, I think we have to move to investment-led recovery. But doesn't that, but under, doesn't to, that to have some me, tax cuts? Doesn't that uh, undermine public confidence? Because Charles, call it a game or call it what you want. That's what the public is seeing. Uh, well, see, uh, name calling on both ends of Capitol Hill. Where's where's the end result? But, Charles, I I am not in favor of the name calling. I came to Washington to be about good public policy for people's lives. I'm just suggesting to you that to say it's class warfare where you have tax, tax cuts for people on the top and wealthy people and then to have some tax cuts for middle income people and have the president call that class warfare makes no sense at all. I think that was a good bill. I just don't think it goes far enough. Now we have to go to the economic recovery. But I think to give people some tax fairness was a step in the right direction. President Bush didn't agree. You can have the disagreement. The name calling is what I object to. The harshness and the meanness of it is what I think turns people off. Not that we have disagreements. Mr. Harris? Yeah, Charles, I, I think, uh, I, I don't agree with the senator. I think uh, what went on last week probably gave the Democrats a slight advantage because they painted the president again into the corner of wanting to somehow give the rich a break or not let them be taxed. In normal times, that would be a victory for the Democrats. But now I think there's something else that's taken place. It's a kind of feeling, for heaven's sake, don't you know we're hurting out here and all you can do in Washington is come up with, with, with action that's no action. Uh, you're, you're, you're wrangling. It's, it's, it's a deadlock. It's gridlock. It's a, it's, it's, it's a disaster. So that what people now react to is to say the whole thing is, is, is rotten to the core. Uh, the people in it are. You know, you know there's one interesting spinoff for the presidential election. We wonder why uh, the charges against Bill Clinton, which... I suppose in some ways are more serious than have made some other candidates drop out. And thinking about this, I think I finally got an insight into it. I think uh, that people are so cynical about people in public life and the political process that somehow the Clinton character deficiencies or so-called deficiencies, somehow they say, well, that's not so bad. They're all, uh, all got things wrong with him. So therefore, it hurts him less whether that'll be the case next november or not i don't know but it's a curious kind of thing that the tolerance is so high and the reason is the cynicism is even higher mr can Limbaugh, I, can I find, a, well, let me ask you do you find that that's uh, that's what you're hearing that that people will forgive a flaw or two if they see some hope in a program well i i don't know no mm -hmm. i mean i i don't i don't know how oriented people are toward programs i i think that the people are fed up that nothing is getting done but i think most of the anger that I hear on my show, since you seem interested in that, but, but and my own opinion as well is, most of the anger is directed at Congress. Now let me tell you why, and then you can have at me. People vote ideology one time every four years. People vote national issues, what they want America to be, one time every four years. It's the presidential election. The last three elections have been won in landslide proportions by Republicans offering conservative messages. Since 1980, the Democratic-controlled Congress has opposed as much of that agenda as they could. And that's why we've got the governmental gridlock. Now, the members of Congress love to say that they're just as powerful as the president, and constitutionally they are. But Congress is not composed of people with the same agenda that the people vote for the presidency as. And I think the, the, the real anger in this country is directed that way. This, the, the Democrats are continuing to use this class envy, trying to, to uh, get people angry at the wealthy and, and the rich in this country. And, and it's that, you talk about something that's useless and actually harmful, we cannot, Senator Wellstone or anybody else, recover this economy without somebody getting wealthy. We just can't do it. And the Democrats seem to be standing in the way of anybody getting wealthy, we, uh, whether by hard work or by any other means. And that's simple. I think people are getting sensitive to that, and I think they're getting a little bit frustrated and angry at the same old song from the Democrat Congress going on 12 years now. Let me, let, Senator, let me, uh, ahead. Charles, let me, let me disagree with Rush and also... I guess I'd like to put a question to, to Lou. First of all, um, I mean, I, I think it goes back to the question you asked Lou about why now such anger. I mean, 82 was a deeper recession. I think it's because there were all these promises made during the 80s about all the cuts in taxes for wealthy would lead to more investment, more productivity, we're cuts reduce, in taxes for reduce debt. Let, let me just finish, Rush. And what, not just but, and, what is, and what has happened is we've seen declining wages, uh, bottom four fifths hurting. Uh, fantastic debt levels so people feel ripped off and they're angry and i don't blame them and people don't Senator, like the mix of let me just finish up mix yeah, they don't like the mix minute, of sir. 
mix of money and politics. But the point is, if you think we ought to move on health care, if you think we ought to invest in the economy, if you think we ought to protect the environment and the president will veto everything you do, then I don't think that's playing a game. I think that's a divided government. President people are going to have to make some decisions. President didn't run on Senator. That's why he's vetoing them. He didn't run, nor was he elected to do the stuff you want to do. He was elected to do the stuff he wants to do, and you and your colleagues are standing in the way. We've well, got just a few seconds. Do you want to pose element? that question to Mr. Harris in, in five seconds? Can you do yep. that? Let me say, there's one thing that's different about the 1992 election as far as Republicans in the White House are concerned. They've now been in office for 12 uninterrupted years, they are the incumbents, not the out party who are running against Jimmy Carter or whoever. As a consequence, George Bush is the biggest problem. He's an incumbent subject to anti-incumbent feelings every bit as much as anybody in Congress. Mr. Harris, we're out of time. Senator Wellstone, Mr. Limbaugh, thank you all for joining us. I'll be yes. back with a final thought in a moment. There are still places you can go where the best things in life are free. Panama City Beach, Florida. Dazzling snow-white beaches rated among the top 14 in America. Crystal blue waters. Rolling dunes. A natural wonderland tucked away in northwest Florida. Panama City Beach. Call 1-800-PC-BEACH. Usually, when you send flowers out of town, you give the order to somebody who takes a cut. Then he passes the order to somebody else who takes a cut. But now there's Flowers Direct that actually lets you speak to a florist in the town where you're sending the flowers. Flowers Direct. Or we cut is the middleman. Call Flowers Direct now. 1-800-621-2121. If water leaking through masonry walls is a problem in and around your home, here's a paint that's guaranteed to stop water completely. Dry Lock. Brush it on right from the can to inside and outside walls or wherever masonry and water meet. Dry Lock, the number one rated waterproofer, absolutely stops water. You might even say that the water stopping powers of Dry Lock are almost miraculous. Look for Dry Lock products wherever quality paints are sold. If all you need is a room for the night, any of these will do. Of course, the accommodations have a sameness to them, and the hospitality, it's pretty much no, you can't. There's a better choice. Radisson. With 250 hotels around the world, as individual as the people who stand, and every Radisson has a yes, I can spirit. So why let a big, impersonal place treat you like a number? Why get a room where you can get a Radisson? It was George Bush, you'll recall, in his inaugural address three years ago, who with hand outstretched said the voters had not sent him or Congress to Washington to bicker. And of course, they've been bickering ever since. It was Winston Churchill, as I recall, who said democracy is the worst form of government except for all others. The voters seem to be saying they expect democracy to be just a bit better. If, as now seems likely, George Bush and Bill Clinton are the presidential nominees, the Republican and Democratic parties will have chosen the candidates with the stronger organizations, the most endorsements, and above all, perhaps, the most money to sustain a campaign in which ideas are often submerged beneath the packaging. Is money everything when you're running for president? That's the question on Newsmakers Sunday. Guests include the Democratic candidate with the $100 limit and the 800 number, Jerry Brown. Newsmakers Sunday airs at 10.30 Eastern on CNN. Now for Newsmakers Saturday, thank you for joining us in Washington. I'm Charles Pierbaugh. For a transcript of Newsmakers Saturday with Charles Bierbauer, send $4 to Newsmakers Saturday Transcripts, Journal Graphics, 1535 Grant Street, Denver, Colorado, 80203, or call one 301